And then what happens is as price pulls back, they cover their shorts. And once they've, it's a wash, rinse, repeat cycle. And you know, we're, the, the encouraging thing is we're getting to a position, we're getting closer to a spot where uh, is typically coincident with made, with lows in the metals. So I don't think we've got much further to the downside to go. But uh, as far as a currency reset, yeah, the, the natural order of things, if this were to play out to its natural conclusion, would be for a complete collapse of the currency. That's where this would happen. Yeah, nothing makes sense these days. It's like a bizarro land where, uh, you know, whatever is logical, the opposite happens. But, uh, you know, obviously, you know, the market is starting to look forward to future Fed easing again. And th that's why, you know, the stock market went up, went up. Bad news is good news in this backwards world sometimes. When you look at the, the dollar index, what you're looking at is the dollar relative to a basket of six other debt-based fiat currencies. So there's a basket of six currencies. It's measured most hev uh, that basket is most heavily weighted towards the euro. You got the Japanese yen in there, the British pound. And if you've got six currencies that are all falling and losing purchasing power, but the dollar just happens to be losing purchasing power at a slower rate, it gives the perception of relative strength, but it's still losing purchasing power. It's being debased. It's just you're measuring it against other falling debt based fiat currencies. When you measure it against hard assets, the dollar is losing purchasing power and it's going down. So I, I think about the dollar index as like a headwind or a tailwind. The, the metals and commodities can rally in unison with a rising dollar, just like they have kind of, there was a period for the last couple months. It just means that you've got a headwind. Um, so it's not like there's a perfect inverse correlation between the dollar and metals and commodities. The volatility we've seen in the last few months, I think is only gonna be amplified in both directions across all markets. So prepare for a volatility, but you know, the overall macro trends are going to be inflationary with quick deflationary impulses along the way. So we have to be prepared for that. There's going to be sharp pullbacks, but the, tr the overall trend is towards inflation. And I think the smart thing to do is position yourself in things that will benefit from that inflation because inflation transfers wealth, transfers wealth um, from people who have paper assets to those with hard tangible assets and silver, uranium, gold, platinum, battery metals, things like that are stand to benefit the most in the coming years in this kind of environment, as long as you can stomach that volatility. The last several thousand years of human history are any guide. Silver and gold are the prime beneficiaries of this exact environment. Um, it's volatile. The majority of the move tends to happen in the last portion of the time, and that frustrates a lot of people. If you go back to the 1970s bull market in metals, where it was highly inflationary, very similar environment that we have now, stagflation, slow economic uh, growth, a lot of inflation. Um, the metals did really well in that decade, but there was a couple year period where silver actually fell by 50%. I think it was 1978 before rallying, you know, several hundred percent in a period of, you know, just a handful of months. So the vast majority of the move comes, comes at the end of the time and that requires conviction in the fundamental thesis. I, I use technicals to tell me when to buy and sell, but really it's that the fundamentals that tell me what to buy. And I, I think without having a firm grasp of the fundamentals, it, it can be easy to be shaken loose. Unfortunately, it's the retail investor who usually sells at the exact wrong time. And you know, the bottom line is the Fed is trapped. Other central banks are trapped. There, there's no solution to these problems. They're going to have to revert back to more money printing on steroids like we haven't seen before. Each stimulus package has to be bigger and bigger and bigger than the previous one in order to kick this can down the road, unless they want to... Uh, have you know implosion of the economy sooner and they don't want that to happen on their watch they just want to kick it down the road kick the can down the road so the blame falls on someone else uh, a couple things about there you, you mentioned the manipulation and one thing i track every single week very closely is the commitment commitment of traders report that's where you can tell how the big banks are positioned and not surprisingly they were positioned for this pullback in metals they were heavily short gold and silver and then what happens is as price pulls back they cover their shorts and once they've it's a wash, rinse, repeat cycle. And, you know, we're, the, the encouraging thing is we're getting to a position, we're getting closer to a spot where uh, is typically coincident with major, with lows in the metals. So I don't think we've got much further to the downside to go. But uh, as far as a currency reset, yeah, the, the natural order of things, if this were to play out to its natural conclusion, would be for a complete collapse of the currency. That's where this would happen. Uh, but I think you and I would agree that they're probably going to roll out some kind of new system beforehand. Before it goes to zero, they're probably not just going to sit there and watch the dollar go to zero. 
And that's probably going to involve central bank digital currencies, loss of our you know freedoms and uh, liberties and all those kind of things. They're going to do that. Um, the, the question is, how successful will they be and who are going to be the winners and losers? Uh, I call it every 40 years or so, the rules of the game change. And I think the global monetary system, the rules are about to change. If, whether it's in the next few months or a couple of years, I don't know. I think it's sooner rather than later. But the rules of the game are going to change. They've got a plan. And um, pro- probably your average retail person, is they don't have their best interest in heart. I think about it, it's, it's just a math problem <clears throat> of the, the, the furthest this could possibly go, and it can't even go that far, is we're approaching a point where um, the interest on the debt <clears throat> excuse me, consumes 100% of federal tax receipts. So if all of our tax dollars go to paying interest on the debt, you know, obviously that's uh, you know, unsustainable or it's, something has to break before we get to that point. And the big variable in that equation is interest rates. And interest rates have spiked from, they were, the 10-year was down at 0.4%, which was crazy in March of 2020. It's since rallied to right around 3%. That that's up, you know, several fold in just a couple short years, and this is a historic rally in bonds, or excuse me, um, in in yields, and the government, or excuse me, our economy just can't handle those kind of interest rates. I mean, every one percent rise in interest rates adds about three hundred billion dollars in interest payments for the national for the federal government to have to pay uh, that, that they've put into their budget, and who's who's going to buy these bonds? Who's going to finance our deficits? If uh, you know China is stepping back, Saudi Arabia is stepping back, um, and and the Fed is stepping back, the, they can't allow interest rates to rise, and that's what's going to happen unless the Fed reverses course, reverts back to money printing, which they're going to do uh, at some point. It's just a matter of when. Central planners, their their objectives are they want stocks to go up, they want housing to go up, they want everything to go up, but they don't necessarily want it to go parabolic. They want to kind of control it. So I think this is them letting some air out of the tire a little bit. Um, and it, it also gives the impression that, hey, look, we're doing something. We've got, we're not uh, um, impotent. You know, we, we, we can, we, we can, we've got tools, we're in control. Um, so I think they reverse course when the people beg for it. You get a 20% pullback in the stock market and we've already pulled back, you know, pretty sharply. You get another 10, 15% pullback. All the people who were fed critics on CNBC, oh, inflation's running hot. It, they need to do something. Those same people are going to be on. They're going to be begging for it. Give us more money printing, and they're going to demand it. And the Fed will acquiesce like they always do, and they'll look like the heroes to a lot of the population anyway.